What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle as I press my hotkey which apparently opens my menu. Lovely. I'll have to swap that around. Welcome back to the Nerd Castle and here is a summary of everything we've accomplished thus far in Sid Meier's Pirates. We've become a major in the Dutch army, we are a captain in the French army, we are an English captain and we are a Spanish captain, although they're sort of grumpy with us right now. You will see that they have finally added a reward for capturing us. We have no wealth, we have a thousand acres, which actually I would say that that's wealth in and of itself. There is nothing better than owning land. We have gained one romance point with a rather plain woman, the Dutch daughter in Curacao. We've defeated Blackbeard and Jean Lafitte. And so I think today what we're doing is we are escorting this little mail runner right here, which they won't tell you this, but the mail runner is one of the best ships in the game. It's very, very good. And we're taking it to, I think, Puerto Cabello, I think. So let's get it on over there. We're going to try and cause as much trouble along the way as we can. A French privateer. So they're probably going to try and mess with our little mail runner. Yes, they are. They're messing with our mail runner, unfortunately. And so we will have to beat up some French ships. Otherwise, we will lose reputation with the... Ooh, this is sort of disappointing. As a result of politics, in order to keep the Dutch happy, which I'm more interested in... I am way, way, way more interested in keeping the Dutch happy than I am with keeping the French happy right now. Because the French are way across the ocean, and so I'm not even really concerned about it. Really? A sloop of war is actually a really good ship. I'm just saying, oh, I just made a mistake. I should stop doing that. Luckily, they're making a mistake right now, so it's not that big of a deal. Is he going to run for it? I like this ship right here, so we may swap to the sloop of war. It's fast enough to where you can board the enemy without taking too many hits. And as you can see right now, our ship is just so big that evasion is not really an option for us. I'm going to go with the longsword. We'll jump him. And we really need the Dutch to be... Oh, how did that happen? Just took too long, I guess. There we go. Off my ship. Or off your ship, which is now my ship because I claim it. And there it is. We gained a little bit of gold. I guess he'd been plundering somebody previously. We're not able to take much else from him. We're going to keep the French ship. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to fleet status. And I don't like how slow these bigger ships are. I'm used to playing with really, really small ships because the game is more difficult on higher difficulties. Obviously, that seems a little redundant to say. But smaller ships do much better on higher difficulties. So I'm going to go with the Sloop of War. And in fact, if we were playing on the maximum difficulty right now, what I would do is I would raid this ship. And after raiding it, I would take that little mail runner right there. And I would use it as my ship for the remainder of the game because the mail runner is a super amazing ship. Did the ultimatum make it? There it is. So the delivery of the Dutch King's ultimatum has triggered a war between Spain and Holland. That's a really, really good thing for us because now it counts for extra when we beat up Spanish ships. The Span or the Dutch will be happy about us beating up anything that isn't their ship. But, oh my god, what is going on with the wind right now? The wind is just sticking it to us, unfortunately. What is that? There's another sloop of war. Let's beat that up. And so I'm going to engage right here. We're going to have to fight both of them at the same time, but it's not going to be that big of a deal. I'm going to use our newfound maneuverability to make sure that we're able to board them quickly without too much pain. Okay, and so we crash aboard. I'm going to go with the longsword again. Oh, he dodged that, huh? That's incredible. Yeah, time my attacks a little bit better. That's why you don't tend to let the animation finish when you start your next attack. You sort of want to get it like that right there to where it goes off before it's actually finished. Otherwise, you miss a lot. So down he goes. We will take, yeah, sure, 70 ton or 30 tons of spice. Why not? That's super spicy. And so now, everywhere we go, people will know that we're saucy and spicy and that we've got attitude. As your ship approaches, the enemy strikes the colors of wealth and gold and plunder are yours for the taking. Baron Raimondo is going to Nombre de Dios, which we knew about. God, we have so much loot right now. And they're going to... Oh, there's a pirate hunter, so we need to get the hell out of here. Let's go ahead and do an about face. He should be faster than us because he gets a buff to chasing us down. And what we want to do now is we're going to go back to Curacao. We're going to drop off some of our loot because look at this fleet that's following around behind. It's just too much. It's just too much. I don't know... Nombre de Dios is way over there. I don't know if he's leapfrogged us already. I'd be willing to bet he probably has. We'll keep an eye out for Baron Raimondo because that's one of the main things you need to get done during the course of the game. We need to sell off a bunch of this stuff. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to offload that much. But the spice is going to fetch a very nice price. So I won't think twice about unloading it even though it's loaded with lice. And we'll go talk to the governor. 
And now we've been promoted to Colonel, which is fantastic. Now we get trade goods. Oh, Dutch ports have more trade goods now. That's good. And so the daughter wants us to hang out with her. We're going to say, nah, we're good. We're not going to be down for that. No, thank you. And Baron Raimondo's ship has copper plating. Over here, we can buy ourselves a ruby ring if we wanted to continue the engagement quest. I don't really care about it, so we're just going to ignore it for now. Probably get a couple more crew for the day. Let's go to the shipwright, and we will repair our ship. And it looks like we're just going to end up playing this on the side of the on the side of the Dutch, no matter what we do. We'll get rid of the trade galleons. We're still a little bit overloaded, so what I'll do is let's go through and repair all of these. And what we need to do is we need to head back up to the north, unfortunately. Because we are simply carrying just too much stuff. I would love to find Baron Raimondo before we do that. But I can't promise that we're actually going to find him. So this might be a giant waste of our time. He does move around in a pretty fast ship. If you need to get food, you can get him from grain transports. Keep that in mind in case you ever find yourself a little bit low on biscuits. That hardtack. I had a teacher who made hardtack one time. We were talking about the colonists from back in the day. Who is that? A Spanish raider. I'm not really interested in you. Totally not that interested in you. You're just not that interesting. I oh, we've got favorable winds. And so what we need to do right now is let's head back up towards the northeast. We will do a swing through all of the Spanish, I'm sorry, all of the English locations and all of the French locations. I think it's faster to go up this way to the northeast than it is to run straight to the east because the wind is so rarely favorable when you're trying to go back straight to the east. And so I actually very much think that this is the better run that you're trying to make if you're trying to curry favor with everybody. I think we're going to hit that storm. Yeah, and so in the interest of keeping the X-Men off my tail, I think I'm just going to kind of scurry around it. And then we will go back up this way. How far are we right now? Yeah, I was going to say, I think it is faster. We will wait for a more... Actually, I think we can do favorably right here. And so we'll cut slightly to the southeast while the wind favors it. If you're still not sure where I'm getting these wind readings from, you will look to the bottom left-hand corner right there. We needed to make up for some eastern distance anyway, so that's not really that big of a deal. So I'll take the favorable wind and we will land where we may. Yeah, I'm thinking we could put into port at Nevi. We may start up, stop off at Guadalupe, but we'll go with Guadalupe for now. Ooh, never mind. The wind is still being janky. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of a northward cut right now and just hope. Eh, southeast cut. I'll change my mind. We're going to dodge that storm. Maybe some of our ships are going to dodge that storm. Half our ships are going to dodge that storm. Oh, well. And then we'll just make for Guadalupe. I think that's going to be the better option for us right now. So let's go for Guadalupe. I'm starting to mumble to myself. I've noticed over the course of the last couple weeks, whenever I'm recording these episodes, I start to mumble to myself randomly. I've noticed that I lose very much kind of the aggressiveness of my voice. And that's a little bit embarrassing as a radio man. So I think that I should probably get back on the horse here. We've only got seven knots of wind at the moment. There's a Spanish raider. We could take him out for a little bit of extra favor and a little bit of extra scratch. But they don't tend to carry very much on them, so I think I'm just going to ignore them for now. And we'll put into port at St. Kitts and Nevi. I think Nevi is the better option, or Nevis. I don't know if it's Nevis or Nevi. I don't know if this used to belong to the French and then the British took it. Or if the British named it, it's definitely Nevis. If the French named it, it's Nevi. I don't know. Eh, not really that interested in Eleuthera. Oh, we're the sixth most notorious. Moving on up to the west side of the Caribbean. St. Kitts is buying spice, and we happen to have a lot of spice. So let's go up to St. Kitts, and we'll sell that. We'll do the hop, skip, and a jump here. Let's talk to the governor. There it is, and we are now a major, and we got another hundred. The governor's rather plain daughter wants to go hang out at the ball. Sure, let's go have a ball, lady. We can definitely get down with your bad self, because you give me presents, and I'm okay with that. See, now this one right here is not giving me any of the tips, so that's good. Now we're playing this realsies mode where it doesn't give you those golden glowing tips. This is how I dance at the club, by the way, in case you were wondering. This is exactly that right there, that move. I have broken that out on multiple occasions. You got to make sure to get it to, like, you got to be up on your tiptoes. The balls of your feet are really important for establishing dominance. Like, so for example, if you look at wolves in nature, or if you look at, like, caveman, there's not very many of them left, but if you occasionally see a caveman, you will notice that they get up on the balls of their feet and they do kind of a little pirouette motion whenever they try and establish their dominance over other cavemen. And so what we're doing right here is we're letting everybody in the 
court know that this is what's up. Now, we have not donned the ceremonial wig of oldness, which the rest of them have donned. That's because we're simply not at that point in our career yet to where we're willing to make the concession. Once we start to go bald slightly, I will wear the ceremonial, I guess, the ceremonial albino frock, or the albino wig of dominance. And I almost missed that key right there because I was talking and looking at people on the side. Ah, oh, well. I like to tap my foot. I would say that a good plan if you're trying to match up the beats is to tap your foot and make sure that your hand lands precisely when your finger lands precisely when your foot hits the ground. I mean, I don't know how many of you are in music class, but you do what you got to do to keep time. And you'll see that right now, because I'm tapping my foot, I've actually gotten much better at this because it's from band class. That's what happens. You remember your old band class tricks and then all of a sudden you're tapping your foot up. Oh, I missed a couple right as I start to talk about how proficient I am at keeping the beat. And so, having shown how awesome we are, having flexed our skills on the dance floor, she is thoroughly impressed and she gives us a present. Today, we've got a leather vest or a fencing shirt. The quality spyglass I'm not going to concern myself with because it's not that great of an item. It's okay, but you pick that up later once you've got all the other good stuff. The fencing shirt allows us to dodge faster, and the leather vest makes us get knocked back less when we get shot or stabbed. I'm going to go with the fencing shirt because I feel like we need to be looking fabulous while we're fighting the enemy. And so, the puffy fencing shirt we will take. It's also important to note that whatever you do take is added onto your character, so if you pay attention now, our shirt will be extra puffy when we fight in our next combat, or if we had taken the leather vest, it actually adds it onto your character. It's little details like that that I, as a person that values aesthetic, I, I really do value aesthetics in video games, and so I really like the fact that we get to upgrade our character along the way. Once you put on armor, it just modifies the sleeves and makes them poofier. I think actually the, the poofy, it makes us better at fencing too, it makes our attacks faster. Ah, Jean Lafitte's treasure. Search in the vicinity of Trinidad. We still don't have enough to go off of, though. We need coastline before we can deploy out to grab that thing. I, how many crew do I have? 164. Now we're full up. We're not going to take that. Let's go to the merchant and see what we can unload here. Obviously, we're going to be unloading spice, and we are going to bankrupt this port. So there it is. We've unloaded a little bit of spice. Might be worth it to pick up some luxuries here, just in case we see luxuries selling at a high price somewhere else. So play the trading game a little bit while you're here. It's never a bad plan. Sugar's a little bit low. We could buy it. Food, high-ish. But we're going to be kind of touring around anyway, so it doesn't matter if we can't get all the prices that we want right now. What we'll do is we'll hit Nevi, then we'll go up to St. Eustatius. So over here, they're still selling at a reasonably decent price on spice, so let's go ahead and unload the remainder of our spices. And we're getting wealthier and wealthier. Pretty soon, though, we're going to have to divide the wealth among our pirates to keep them happy. I'm going to buy some food while I'm here. Six months worth, to be exact. Maybe seven. And then we will unload the remainder of our stock, if we can. It's not going to let us, unfortunately, because we're out of space. I'm going to repair my sloop of war. And let's start unloading some of these ships. Do we have any smaller ships we can get rid of? We do not. I'll upgrade to Grape Shot since I guess this ship doesn't have it and that's important for us. We'll sail away. Let's hit St. Eustatius with the last little bit of our goodies. And we can land. I don't know if I've told you this yet, but if we land on any part of these islands, we can just walk around on the island if we wanted to. So that's a thing that you can do in this game. There's just such tremendous breadth in this game that I'm not even sure that I'm going to be able to hit it all before we finish the game off. Let's talk to... Oh, good. There's the Concertina. For 6,000 gold pieces, we can get the Concertina, which is the upgraded version of the three-stringed fiddle that we got in the previous episode. I'm going to take it, because that's one of the best investments you can make for keeping people happy. The less you have to come back to port, the better. And the attractive daughter of the Dutch governor wants to take us to the ball, so let's go for it. I don't think that there's any way that this could backfire on us. It's a slow dance, so we should be okay. Let me tap my foot, because I'm messing up here. And you really want to make sure that you kind of have vested interest in the later parts once it gets a little bit faster. Ooh, I missed that one. It is important to note that if you miss your cue and you hit the wrong thing, it counts the last thing you hit, not the first thing. And so if you miss, you can cue up new actions, and the last one that you press will be counted as right. So just be careful about that. I don't know if you knew that that's a thing that you can do, but if you miss the button, don't delay. You can still hit the right button and it will fix it and cancel it out. I don't know if that counts for higher difficulties, though. Higher difficulties, it may be only the first thing that you put in that counts. I'm not sure. I would have to have somebody more experienced with the game fact check that for me. We are dancing to the bottom left. 
so beautifully right now. I just want to say that our form is top notch. I think that we could definitely run the strong... I think we could make a very, very strong case for ourselves for a television show. Dancing with the pirate stars? Dancing with the R's? I guess... Oh, I tripped making it. It's okay. I'll trip for a joke. I don't mind. Dancing with the R's? Dear God. I can't believe that that just happened. I have to like, that pun right there took me so much effort that I have to recuperate. You may notice that I've gone silent afterwards. It's because I'm recuperating. That's exactly what's happening. And we lost a lot of love with this lady when we tripped and fell. That's no good. I used to trip and fall all the time when I was in school. What's weird is I've noticed that falling as an adult hurts a lot more than falling as a child. I don't know what it is, but falling down as an adult, it's also sort of embarrassing because you've got to like, you can't be, oh good, we got another present. And these ones are all lovely. So we've got the weather glass. The weather glass makes us sail faster when we go along the edges of storms and underneath clouds. The set of balanced swords makes us attack faster. The one-shot pistol makes our opponent start one step backwards at the outset of any fight or duel. And the silk fencing shirt is the upgraded version of the poofy fencing shirt that we have that makes us both dodge and attack faster. I believe that I will go for... All of these are great choices. I'll probably go with the silk fencing shirt so that our fencing moves are a little bit faster. I do think that that's probably the best choice. We're getting a double whammy right there. It makes both our attacks and our our defense faster, I think. So I think I'll stick with it. Here they've still got... Oh, see, like I said, we traded for luxuries right there. Let's go ahead and move those. We'll put those in at port. The guns are going for a reasonably decent price right here, so we'll sell those off. And I'm really, at this point, I'm just trying to get rid of ships. We'll get rid of our sugar. And now we can rest assured that this port has more than enough sugar to film a white snake video. We'll unload some of our goods as well. And let's get rid of some of these ships. And so the Magdalene, we'll get rid of... There's got to be some kind of bad luck involved with taking a ship that's named after Mary of Magdalene. I don't know, maybe I'm just superstitious. We will sell off these ships. Uh, we've still got to carry one with us. We'll get the fine grain powder, that's okay. I may be carrying around too many pirates with me. That might be my problem. I'm going to carry around too much food just to get things done. And so finally we will go hit the French ports and then we'll head back down to the southwest to cause problems with the lovely, lovely Spanish who just seem to be financing most of our adventures at this point. Montserrat we will go to. Talk to the governor. And the plain daughter wants us to hang out with her, so I guess we'll go for it because we get presents, and I love presents. If there's one thing I found out in life, it's that I do indeed very much like presents. I like the color of her dress, though. While she may not be incredibly fetching, that dress is a gorgeous color. Maybe it's just that way on my... I like how I change shirts for the ball that I'm going to. I know how to dress for the proper team. I do. Wow, that color is fantastic. I need to get a shirt that's that color, like some pants that are that color or something, because that is just a rich color of purple. I don't know why I'm so smitten with the color of that dress, but I am. And so that's going to repeat, so it's going to be back, bottom left, bottom left. Be aware that the patterns do repeat sometimes, and then every now and again they just throw you for shenanigans and they just give you random. And so we will pirouette our way to victory here. See, this is why I'm doing better than all the other pirates. They aren't taking the time out of their- oh, I almost tripped right there, they almost got me. They almost got me, so I think it's going to be left, bottom, or I'm sorry, right, bottom, left. I know directions. There we are. And so matching the harps, oh, they almost got me again. And so now it's going to be left to bottom right. It's going to swap. And let's bring this thing on home. But as I was saying, the reason the other pirates are doing so terrible with their careers is because they aren't really front-stocking for the future. Like, the dance halls are really where you need to be at to make the proper connections. In order to make all this work, you want to know how I do so well at pirating? It's all about dancing with the ladies. Every now and again, you just got to put in a little bit of time, make sure the ladies are happy. It's part of the piratical nonsense that goes on on a daily basis. There we go. 
And so having finished off yet another dance, let's see if we get another present. We did! Oh my god, sometimes you don't get presents very often. Like the last time that I played the game, they were all giving me quests and telling me where Ramondo was and stuff. And so these presents are actually really, really good. I'm gonna go with a set of balanced swords because the thing that you're gonna see the most deterioration in, as you get towards the end of the game and your character ages, he's gonna get worse and worse at fencing. He'll get worse at everything, but fencing is the one that deteriorates the fastest. And so you wanna have all the bonuses. The set of balanced swords give you... Oh good, they attack with lightning speed. They increase your attack speed. I knew that already, but I was just reading the tooltip. I knew it already. Let's sell off the remainder of these goods. And I think we can only have 70 on board our ship. Oh, we don't want to do that. That would be a huge mistake right now. Yeah, I think we're just carrying around too much stuff. So we need to unload some of our crew. We'll keep this ship along with us. This will just be our little crewman ship that carries around all of our fun stuff. All of our ill-gotten gains. Let's look at the politics of the area right now and see what's going on with everybody. And it looks like everybody is at war with the Spanish. And so, as always, our best plan is just to beat up the Spanish. Just make it happen. And also get rid of some crew. So I'm going to try and board ships as rapidly as possible as we go into this next phase of the game. I'm going to keep it southward. Because I'm going to try and make most of our exploits take place around Margarita so that we can run off to Barbados if we need to to get promotions from the British. Although, honestly, we've sort of swapped sides on over to the Dutch, which is always what ends up happening with me. Almost unanimously, I always end up on the Dutch's side. So, oh, there's a trade galleon. So this guy is going to be our first mark of the day. Our mark of the month, I guess. And if we take any damage from right here, we do have Grape Shot. Did I reinforce my hull? I don't remember if I bought the reinforced. I didn't. I should have. That was a mistake. I'll dodge that as artfully as I can. We'll come back around, hit him with Grape Shot to maybe thin out his crew slightly. We'll hit Grape Shot right... Oh, it didn't kill anybody, unfortunately. Okay, and so we get a modest pile of gold and plunder. Raimondo is sailing for Santa Mar... Oh, Santa Marta, okay. So we gotta watch out for that. We'll keep this lady right here. Where is Santa Marta? Or Santa Marta, if you're trying to say it more accurately. Santa Marta. It's got to be like up in here somewhere. It can't be. It's got to be in one of these outlying settlements, I think. It's got to. Maybe it's one of the little towns, actually. You got to zoom in to get the little towns to show up, and you've got to have the Dutch rudder. So we may be out of luck right there. Santa Marta. Oh, it's right there. Okay, so he was going from there to there, I guess. So we're probably not going to be over that way for a while because the other factions don't really have much in the way over there. We could establish something. Off in that direction if we wanted to. A Spanish smuggler? Yeah, let's take him. Let's take him right this second. The smugglers sometimes have really nice stuff on them. And so he's sailing a pinnace. Which leads to all kinds of funny jokes. I guess I'm a pirate who's just after another pirate's pinnace. I mean, that's going to be all day we can make jokes about that. I feel like I've got to keep them limited just because it's too easy. We'll go longsword this guy. Oh, he's going fast. Ah, oh, hell. I'm actually pretty quick with a mouse, you'll see. Let me fight this one with a mouse and you'll see how much better I am with a mouse. And so there it is, we finished him off. That's because I'm used to playing with the mouse. He was smuggling sugar, it looks like. A sugar smuggler. I don't know what the business is for that. We've got a pirate hunter coming in. And so we're going to take him out as well. Because he will start shooting at us if we don't. And that's a royal sloop. I don't remember if the royal sloop is better than... The Royal Sloop or the Sloop of War? I think the Sloop of War is better. They shot off something cylindrical right there. I'm not really sure what it was. I'm going to hope that it's nothing important. And we will crash into him. I'm going to go with the Versatile Longsword. And so let's go ahead and keep whittling away at him. I'm going to practice my numpad skills on this one since he's not too fast. Off he goes. We take a little bit of gold, not much, but we got some food, which we can actually sell for a reasonable price at some places. If you wanted to bombard the ports, you can press the space bar, and it will bombard the port. Just watch out. They shoot back. Just just be aware that they may fire back, and it may get you into trouble. We need to get rid of some of this crew, and we need to make some money. So let's do our best to find something worthwhile to plunder here, because the only thing that makes pirates happier is plunder. And we have not had any serious scores in a while. We are just the saddest Donkey Kong machine on Earth. No good scores. We'll work our way over to here, although he is outrunning us at the moment. Please don't run yourself across the rocks. I don't want to chase you across them. We can attack him from here. 
and he's got 10 guns and 43 crew. We might be able to get him to surrender so that we don't have to do the dueling minigame. There's no XP or anything, so there's no real point in doing the dueling minigame. Unless you're really sort of planning on... We duck that right there. We've reloaded. Ah, lovely. And so we'll get back in here. He should just... A healthy hull. Even better. I prefer that my, my hulls of gold not have any diseases. It's embarrassing when you have to go through and get the... Got another pirate hunter coming in at us. This is going to be, happen more and more often as we get more and more famous for beating up the Spanish. And basically what he's just going to do is he's going to shoot at our ships in the back and just cause them damage and make them unhappy. What I'm going to do is try and get into combat with him, although he has the wind, sort of. This might not work out. And we're going to end our vacation in Curacao. Where from Curacao, I think what I'm going to try and do is pick up sailors. And I may try and establish a French port down here and also an English port just to make my life a little bit easier so that I can pick up upgrades. He's a little bit quicker because he's using the rapier. Actually, no, he's got the longsword. You can also taunt if you press the 6 key. The taunt will give you a little bit of advantage. I'm just going to mash my way through right here. The only people you really need a ton of advantage with are the people that have... Just loads and loads and loads of speed. And I think now the Dutch Raider is beating up Caracas. Interesting. It might be worthwhile to maybe set our sights on Caracas for the future. Are you serious? Another one already? And he's so far into the back that it's just not even worth it for me to go back there and stop him. And he's going to beat up my trade ship. I'm just going to sit there and beat up my trade ship, you douche. You little yellow wearing douche. Alright, well, let's go ahead and take him out because we don't have a choice. That's one of my less favorite mechanics, the fact that they just, like, come fight you and just can damage your ship and you can't do anything back. That's why I don't enjoy that facet of the gameplay. Never have, never will. We'll check out these royal sloops and see if they're any better in just a minute. And he has himself a rapier, so he's going to be a little bit faster. Luckily, we've got all the upgrades we need to make this happen. And so off the ship he goes. Yeah, let's keep her. I mean, we might as well. Oh my god, another one? Alright, so we're just going to have to ignore him, and we're just going to go straight for port. There are so many of them. It's because we're attacking things so close to port, I think, and that's what kind of triggers them coming in. He's unfortunately going to damage the hell out of all of our ships, though, which is lowering the amount of money we make when we get them back to port. It's increasing our costs. Let's go talk to the governor and get some upgrades here. And now we're an admiral. Even better. And we get 150 acres. Cool. And so his plain daughter still wants a ring. We don't care about that. We just wanted her presence. That's the only reason we took her out on a first date in the first place. We'll sell off this. We will sell off our goods. We also need to sell off a ton of this food, especially since the prices are high. So let's get that going. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for another episode of Sid Meier's Pirates, a game that I've been looking forward to playing for a very, very long time. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. I never have a problem playing this game and just blathering on about it because it is seriously one of the greatest games ever. So I will see you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and as always, hi-do.